anesthesia. The question was, when anesthesia uh, insert arterial, central, pulmonary, jugular lines, are they all coated with anesthesia? It helps to understand what is the central, you know, what is a central line? Well, they're talking about a central venous catheter. And um, you can definitely make it bigger. That's fine. I can. Okay. I was going to say, this is, I, I know my one, eyes one. are, go up one. Yeah. Good. Right there, just a little bit lower. Where it said 100, you can just put it to 120. That should work. So where it says 100, yeah. Okay. No, 125 will do that. Oh, very good. That's better on my balls. I was going to have to pull out my glasses. Then you'd get a glare. Uh, okay, so a central venous catheter, that's the central line. Ultimately, it's a thin tube that's put in to a major vessel, and there's various reasons why they're going to put the vessel in, but it's always a large vessel, a large vein. Um, an arterial line is, um, you know, the central venous catheter, a central line, it's a little synonymous. You know, they'll always say, hey, we're going to put in a central line, meaning it's kind of synonymous with venous or arterial. Okay. So um, uh, they'll always let you know where the insertion point is. And that is ultimately what it is, is, you know, like a, um, a subclavian line would go under the clavicle and the subclavian artery. Um, again, uh, the, I found a couple great places that had articles about that. I footnoted those there so that when you get this printout, you can go back and do some extra reading. But uh, when they put in an arterial line, it usually means that they're going to be doing a procedure. Uh, sometimes if they do the procedure, they'll go ahead and take it out when you're in recovery. But there are times also when they'll leave it in for um, uh various reasons that they want to monitor. But what they're going to do is anesthesia places those so that they can monitor uh, your blood pressure. They can uh, also uh, do samples real quick that way. They don't be they don't have to poke you multiple times, but it it gives them a way to monitor what's happening at, at a uh, instant instantaneous uh, monitoring. They can also give fluid and drugs immediately in there, and it's going to um, uh, happen faster when they use these lines. So uh, a central venous catheter, the insertion itself, uh, why would they do that? Uh, uh, the internal jugular was mentioned, the jugular vein, uh, which is right here in the neck. You have a carotid artery and you have a jugular vein uh, right there on the sides of the neck. And those are very sm uh, special uh, vessels in the vascular system. They do much more than just, uh, you know, let blood flow. Uh, uh, it's a great study to go in and see uh, how they tell the brain different things things and monitoring. So when they put uh, a, uh, a line in, uh, they like to do uh, subclavian a lot of the times, but uh, again, they can do an internal jugular. Why do they want to do that? Well, sometimes uh, you can have pneumothorax. And um, if that's the case, you know, and it also depends what the procedure is that's being done to you as to where they would place the line. It also matters if you're in a child versus an adult where they may consider putting that line in. So again, why would you put in a line uh, uh, to uh, give a uh, medication. Uh, uh, this one that jumps out at me is high concentration of electrolytes. Uh, you know, your body is chemically balanced as well as electrical and, and a lot of stuff. But um, when you're doing a procedure, if, you know, you start having complications and stuff, they want to uh, onboard medication and maybe even electrolytes or other uh, types of uh, uh, intervenous things quickly. Fluid balance with a CVP is important. Uh, access 
intravenous access uh, so that they don't have to stick you multiple times. Uh, when they do the procedure, if they can onboard medication or fluids through a large vein, then they're going to get a response quicker than if they are trying to do a peripheral vein or just uh, in you with medication. So again, this is different than an IV that you'd have in your arm, right? Uh, maybe it's going to be long term. IVs can only stay in the arm. You know, they don't like them to be in there for more than like 48, 72 hours, or sometimes the, the line will blow. It opens up for infection and stuff like this. But these uh, have a longer patent uh, uh, time period, and they also tend to be, um, I don't want to say more sterile, but um, uh, even though they're more invasive in some ways, they um, I think it's easier for them to keep it uh, clean. So here are pictures. It's very small, I understand, but the subclavian goes right there under the um, so the clavicle, that's where your subclavian artery is, and then this internal jugular vein is up here in the neck, and, and, and they usually like the, the subclavian. Uh, well, first of all, because if you have something sticking in your neck, you know, that's, that's a problem. Um, my mother just went through chemotherapy with breast cancer, and they couldn't put in the, uh, the, the um, pick line subclavian, her port, um, excuse me, because they had problems, so they ended up putting it up higher in her neck, and that is not their first choice to do that. So how do we code that? Well, uh, a CPT code that you probably think of is 36556, and I think it's 555 is um, five years and younger, and um, 56 is five years and older. This is a non-tunneled central line. Uh, keep in mind, there's two types. There's tunneled and non-tunneled. That's another discussion. We've done um, uh, lectures on that before, so don't uh, worry about um, trying to figure out what that is. You can Google it, but you can also go to our YouTube channel and find those videos. I'm sure Boyd put those up on um, what the difference was between a tunneled and a non-tunneled central line, but this is for a non-tunneled central line. Keep in mind that the AMA also states that um, peripherally inserted uh, lines would be 36569. I added that uh, just in case you needed that. But what about anesthesia? This is really, the 36556 isn't really about the anesthesia, and they asked about coding for anesthesia. It's confusing because it says central venous circulation, and you think, well, what if you put it in the subclavian artery? That's not really venous, right? It's not a vein. So I'm thinking, is there another code for that? Well, the great thing about anesthesia codes is they're very broad and they are locational. So if you're doing anything to the head, the code that you're going to pick is going to more or less be anything that is any procedures that's being done to the head will use this particular code. And so um, with 00532, they're saying that anytime they uh, access the uh, uh, vascular system, then it's going to be 00532, right? That's the giveaway. You know, you don't have to try to find one that says subclavian or jugular and everything. You're going to use one code. But heads up, uh, when you're doing anesthesia coding, um, a lot of times you need to add a modifier. There's two modifiers that you need to be aware of. QS is most likely going to be added because the anesthesiologist will be doing the monitoring as well as placing the line, and that would be QS. G8 is going to be, if it's a more complex procedure, um, uh, it's still monitoring, but they call it a MAC, and it's uh, complicated or it's invasive surgery. So let's say you you uh, place the line, but it's going to be for an open heart type surgery. Well, that would be a G8. It's not going to be a QS. G8 is, me, is ultimately means that they'll get paid more. They'll be reimbursed more for that. 
that. This was also a great resource on engageahema.org um, that you can look at later. It's a very long address. I couldn't find a way to shorten that, but it had a whole bunch of additional information on coding for anesthesia. It was so much, and it wasn't really all of it wasn't applicable to what we were talking about today, but I wanted to give you that resource if anesthesia is something that you're needing to deal with, and uh, it gives examples and scenarios, uh, so feel free to jump out and look at that. AHIMA always has some excellent education on their site, um, and that is it. Any questions or anything that you guys want to add? Uh, Skylar, did I, and uh, Jennifer, did I miss anything? No, sounded right to me. Okay, uh, anesthesia can be scary, but actually it's very easy. Uh, once you get into it, gosh, it's very, very repetitious and stuff. So um, if that's something that interests you, there is a credential for that. And you might want I think to... there's a question. Ah, okay. Is a central venous catheter the same as a port for medicine such as chemotherapy? Well, um, the the catheter that they put in the port let me let me think uh, ports are uh, intended to stay for long periods of time okay mm -hmm. so the port that they're putting in for um, the code that we use for anesthesia they would use that code okay but they're not going to be monitoring it right they're not doing a putting in a procedure putting in a port uh, to take it out after the procedure and they're not using it to monitor what's going on in the body. The catheter is not going to stay in. A port is a line that has a catheter but it's long term. Okay so my mother's had her port in for over a year now because she went through a year's worth of chemo and um, and they leave it in because they need to continually go and check stuff and, and instead of uh, it just gives her long-term access uh, to, to pull blood or give her fluids quickly uh, because you're monitored for a long time after you have cancer. Uh, uh, so they, as far as the anesthesia code, it's the same. Is uh, central venous line is different than a port that's uh, being put in and central venous lines are usually temporary and ports are meant to be long term and we have done a video on that so uh, feel free to jump in at our YouTube channel medical coding cert and look at more information about that and that also is where you get that tunneled and non tunneled you know one is meant to be long term and the other one's not it's a very good question though because that there's also that a question is. that says are there anesthesia questions on the CPC exam unfortunately I don't think we can answer that no, we can. There are. Absolutely. There are. There's eight to ten questions on the CPC exam for anesthesia coding. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Um, we almost, I almost have uh, how many questions for each subject is memorized. And most of them are, are um, eight to ten uh, questions in each area, except for Hicks Picks, there's only five. Five questions. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.